Today is February the 3rd. What's the meaning of life? Let's find out together as we read Jesus' early teaching. As we continue to read through the Bible, Mondays and Tuesdays are dedicated to the Old Testament. Thursdays and Fridays are dedicated to the New Testament. Today, in reading through the Gospel, we come to a section that we've come to know as the Sermon on the Mount. I'd like you to read Matthew 4.24 to the end of chapter 5, but also read Luke 6 from verse 17 to verse 36. Now in those two passages, you'll notice two slightly different settings. Matthew 5.1 says, One day as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. Luke 6.17 says, When they came down from the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. Jesus begins to teach in both sections. The Matthew section we call the Sermon on the Mount because that's where Jesus was when he preached it. In Luke, we call it the Sermon on the Plain. You'll notice the content is a little bit different but very similar. Probably what took place is Jesus spent some time drawing this teaching up. And once he taught it, people responded well. So he kept teaching it. But every time, just a slight twist, an extra story, or leaving out part of it over there. As we work through these opening statements of the Sermon on the Mount, what we see is that Jesus starts by addressing probably the main felt need of the people that he was ministering to. How can I be happy? How can I be joyful? The Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5 tells us how one can be happy. Luke Chapter 6 tells us the same thing, a very shortened version. It is interesting that right after Jesus in Luke says, here's what you need to do to be happy, he says, what sorrow awaits you who are rich for you only have your happiness now. He talks about the sorrow of those who don't follow him. Now, right after that, Jesus talks about our purpose. He identifies us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, as salt. And then he identifies us in verse 14 as light. What he's doing by identifying us here is he's giving us our purpose in life. What is the meaning of life. It is to be salt and to be light. Light gives direction. Salt preserves. Our purpose is to give direction to those who we raise in our household, to those who live around us, our friends, our family, our work colleagues. Give direction. We're to be salt. Preserve them. Now the rest of the Sermon on the Mount goes into great detail in telling us what it is that we need to direct, in what direction we need to give them. Jesus, in verse 17, I remember Verses 14 to 16, he talks about our purpose. In verse 17, he talks about his purpose. Don't misunderstand why I've come. He goes on to say that I didn't come to abolish the law. 
I came to give the law true meaning. He gives several examples then, six. He teaches about anger, adultery, divorce, taking vows, seeking revenge, and loving your enemies. In each case, he says, you have heard that it was said. And then he quotes something. Sometimes he quotes a misinterpretation of scripture. Other times he quotes a common adage. But at the end of each time he says, you've heard that this was said. He says, but I say. And he quotes Old Testament scripture and applies it to what was said and changes it totally. He says, basically, you need to internalize God's law. Write it on your hearts. Learn to live it. Learn to love. In the book of Luke, at this stage, what we find is Jesus teaching about love. That occurs in Luke 6, verse 27. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. He talks about love for a good 10 verses. So we come back to our initial question, what is the meaning of life? Jesus knew his meaning. His meaning was to give the law, God's word of the Old Testament, true meaning. Our meaning is to be a light to those around us and salt to them. Our purpose is to direct and to preserve. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you used to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll answer the question, how can I follow Jesus?